Hey there, welcome or welcome back to Fossil and the Spawn. I am Fossil. And I'm Spawn. Now this episode is going to be all about shaking it up, shaking life up, when life shakes you up. And I think actually MLA can lead us in with a story about things getting shook. This like really is not a great story. I feel like anyone from the West Coast is going to be like, okay. Yeah, but we're not. I mean, I'm not. And so when I heard it, I like wanted to duck and cover. I don't know why. I have a couple crazy freaking stories. I'll share. Can I share two stories? Share as many as you want. Okay. So first off, this week in, in MLA, first thing that happened was I was in a meeting. It was like a professional development like sort of thing. And I... I was tired, you know, it was late at night, not super late, but like, eh, like 8 p.m. here, 8.30. And I start feeling really dizzy. And the room felt like it was spinning. And this and is I, without alcohol. Yeah, that's the thing. I was like, oh my God, am I this tired or like this? Like I thought, I, I it, it felt like I took a Benadryl. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ooh. So the room kind of felt like it was uh, spinning a little bit. And then I realized we were having a fucking earthquake. Wow. It was my first earthquake, guys. Tremors. Tremors. <laughs> Yikes. No, thank you. No, it wasn't bad at all. It was like 4.6, which I guess is pretty pretty high. For those of us who don't understand, what's the scale? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're laughing the wrong bit. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh my God, it was a 4.6. It's like crazy. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever that means. Maybe it's good you didn't know. It made no difference to me. They go up to 10. So a f- what you say yours was? Four and a half? 4.6. Uh, you're halfway there. Halfway to a, a scary. Halfway to a scary. So as far as beautiful earthquakes, you only want to be a 4.6. You don't want to be a 10. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So if somebody calls me a 4, I'm going to say, for an earthquake. I mean, 4.6, like, we felt it. It was felt. It was shook. But yeah, the other thing that happened isn't so funny, but <laughs> your face, your face, no one can see her face, but she looks <laughs> mortified. Do you know what I'm going to say? No, I have no Oh, clue. no, I already told you. I sent you an article about it. Oh. So someone died right outside of my window the other day. And I don't know why it's been stuck in my mind for so long gee i wonder why when you everyone else who like because the thing is is i went to bed so like everyone else was like talking about it and like watched it until like 4 a.m and then they were kind of like over it but for me like i've been thinking about it for like days but basically at like 12 40 something um at night there's an arby's parking lot right where I am like literally directly outside my window like mom can you see this yeah no I know I've seen this you showed it to me before Mm -hmm. like that's literally right where we're looking right down into the area that this happened yeah and I guess it was a drug deal gone wrong and the guy was shot in his car and then the other guy like ran on foot fled the scene um and this was all public information well I mean we saw it so I, I'm saying for purposes of recording, this was all public information. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then one of uh, my friends actually called the police and was like, oh my God, we just literally saw a guy get shot. I think they were outside when it happened, which is even scarier. We saw the guy get shot and like run this way, blah, blah, blah. And then for the rest of the night, there was people outside clearing the scene, I guess. Did and you like, hear the gunshots? No, I actually didn't hear it. I, I saw the commotion, but I didn't hear the gunshot, which is kind of crazy because it's so free. You see the Arby sign. <laughs> yes, you right freaking there. see the sign. Like it happened right there. And I did not hear the gunshot. Um, I guess I was schlonked. And um, one of my friends like saw them. Actually, a bunch of my friends saw them like cover the body and everything. That's a shame. Uh, currently, I am uh, trying to create Kevlar crop tops for the girls in LA. Mm, mm-hmm. I that would be Kevlar is what they make the bulletproof vests out of. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's common knowledge. But, I mean, it was a drug deal gone wrong. I don't know. I, I hope that's not happening on the daily for us regulars out here. <laughs> You're like, should I not have said that? 
duck and cover. I'm sending you, I'm sending a helicopter to come airlift you out of there. Me personally, I was not planning on doing a drug deal at 1230 at night in the Arby's parking lot. The guy wasn't probably expecting to get shot in the parking lot of an Arby's. These are all valid things that you're saying currently, but I hope I do not find myself in any situation similar to that. So so if you find yourself not dead and shot in the parking lot of an mm-hmm. Arby's, mm-hmm. the question of the day is how do you know when it's time to walk away <laughs> from? Say, yeah, from a situation, from a relationship, from a friendship, from a job? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because everyone I'm speaking to currently, in mm-hmm. personal and professional, Everyone is morphing in a big way. I like to see it in the universal five year, universal num- in numerology, the five is about big changes, shifts. It's that fulcrum, you're tipping forward or you're stagnating, you're going backwards. But everyone that I know has had to make a very large decision. So I've got friends that have had to move, people who have changed jobs, people who have taken on more responsibility, you name it. It's the full gamut. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know about most of you listening, but I'm a person who doesn't like to quit. I feel like giving up on something is that, but that's my hang up. I studied this to help me know when you, you have to walk away when it's okay to walk away because some of us have been raised with guilt. You're supposed to feel guilty, right? When you want something for yourself. And that is very wrong. You should never feel guilty for doing what's best for you. Are you adding me right now? <laughs> not with that. So, she ignores me. No. Well, I just want to keep going because I don't want you to start goofing off about this. There are mm-hmm. five real questions mm-hmm. to ask yourself to know. And they really fit every area it, it, whatever area in your life you're considering change. Mm-hmm. These are the big questions. Oh, I'm excited. All right. So the first, first you ask yourself, how long has this been going on? The feeling, the, feeling, the, the frustration, the problem. I mean, usually that's a good indicator that it, it's a real thing. It's not something that's temporary. It didn't go away on its own. It didn't work itself out. And it's something that keeps reoccurring because everyone has a different level of endurance, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. Someone might like completely put their head in the sand and ignore forever that there's a problem. Some people might think it's not worth changing jobs because maybe they're tired. Maybe they're older. Maybe they don't feel like it. And then they're, you know, some people are like after a week, nope, forget this. (laughs) So honestly, if it's been going on for months, that's, that's a good indicator of question one. How long has it been going on? The second thing you ask yourself is, did you try to sort it out? Did you try to fix the problem that has arisen from your relationship or with your boss? Now, if it's a work situation, you're going to want to get a third party mediator or a higher level boss or talk to someone. If it's a relationship, you want to talk to someone you trust and care about or go to a counselor or, you know, a therapist I mean, there's, there's help all along the way. So did you do everything to try and fix the problem? Mm -hmm. We know that you can't change the other person or the other party or the job or the company, but you can change your reaction to it. The third question is, is this issue affecting your self-worth, your safety, or your future goals? Oh, that's a good one. A lot of people, this is where they start to have that guilty feeling of, oh, but the oh, buts come in. (laughs) Oh, but it's not that bad. You don't need to be punched in the face to leave a relationship that isn't working for you. Or a situation. Or a situation. You don't need to have a boss that throws something at you physically to say this job isn't working out or they're taking advantage of me. Does it bring you down? At the end of the day, when you go home, are you so drained in dealing with this situation or this person, this relationship or this job that you don't have the energy for something else in your life, something that you actually used to enjoy? Think about that. The fourth thing after you've gone through all of that is literally close your eyes and imagine a day without that job or that person in it. Now, this could do a lot of things for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Say, this didn't exist. I never had this job or I'm not doing this job. 
or this person is no longer in my life. Do you feel a sense of relief? Do you feel confusion? Do you feel fear? That's the next step because that can bring you to a whole other level of making a decision. And then the fifth thing is once you clear up on number four of imagining that day without that person or that job, what is your next step? And give yourself a due date to make that decision because you can't not make it. I mean, some people can not make a decision, but you really want to make a decision so that there's at least closure on what you've decided to do. You don't want to leave that hanging open because if you're going to leave it hanging open, chances are you need to move on. Mm -hmm. If you're avoiding it, yeah, that's telling. If it, exactly. Why are you avoiding it? So, man, mm -hmm. life is short. No regrets, people. You can't get this time back. And there it is. I think that's important with all of the changes that are happening with everyone. A lot of us are just scared. A lot of us are scared to move yeah. forward. There's a lot of un unsurety, the fear of the unknown. I think when it comes to these situations, you know, like if you're already at that point where you're thinking about it and you do it, the worst case scenario is that you regret it, but then you've learned from it. Exactly. There are no mistakes. You were meant to do that thing. Because if you weren't meant to do it, then you probably wouldn't have done it. It's equivalent to that. It's equivalent to asking why. Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I not doing this? I'm in a very selfish phase of my life. Don't say selfish. I say selfish because, I mean, that's what it is. I'm quite literally living for me. Everyone in your age right now should be living for them because you are at a phase of life where you have to figure out your future. But it does come with guilt, of course. But navigating around that guilt to hopefully get to what is meant for us. I don't know. I, I feel like it's worth it. A lot of times when people break up or separate a long time marriage, there's those guilt feelings because you feel responsible for the other person. And that is mm -hmm. all the more reason to be on your own. If you, you really should not at your age be responsible for another person at this phase of life. You're either working together to build a future. And if one or the other isn't in agreement of what that future looks like, it's time to let go. And that does not mean that later on, when both find footing, that they can't navigate back to each other. I don't like that we're going around it. I feel like, you know, the Fats family is here. There's no reason to keep tiptoeing around it. For any of you OG listeners or close people in my life, um, hi, I am single for the first time in four and a half years. Yeah, that was a big one. I feel like I lost someone too, honestly. I, I think that's why you're getting upset right now because you're we're having this conversation and we're pretending like we're not going to literally acknowledge the elephant in the room but there's no way to have this conversation without acknowledging it and fats family we will get to that point where we dive deeper into it um i just think right now so fresh is not smart for me personally yeah for him for anyone it's not really going to be helpful um so we'll get there eventually but just so everyone knows the context <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I hate, I hate this whole topic, but it's important because it is. You're the changed. one who wanted to talk about it. Yes. And I did specifically for that reason, because when you try and avoid something, you shouldn't avoid it. You got to go head first into it. But that's what we're doing right now. Like, Absolutely. I don't want to like, but people need to know that's what happened. But I, I couldn't bring that up. That is your story. It, yeah. I respect that. Sometimes things that feel permanent aren't. When mom is hanging on to that hope. <laughs> no, I'm hanging on to both of you being happy and successful. But that's the thing. At the end of the day, I didn't do it to hurt anyone. I did it to focus on myself. Right. And that's all there is to it. A hundred percent. And I hope he is too. Yeah, same. You know, no one ever tells you as a parent that you're going to get attached to those little shits in your life, in your kid's life. <laughs> no one ever tells you that. Where's that handbook? Where's that one? Yeah, I was surprised by your reaction, to be honest, because during the relationship, you did not make it out to seem like you were as attached as you are now, not portraying, because I know it's real, but like your reaction is very surprising to me. 
Yeah, I guess I assumed I had my own assumptions of you two. I think everyone did, and that was part of the problem. Right. I think that's why I felt so trapped. And that's why I, I stayed out of it. That's why I stay out of it now. I support both of you. But I don't know if that's necessarily true, because I feel like everyone was so attached to it. We all re- come to the table with our relating to it in our relationship. I have been there. I have been on that side of it. Mm-hmm. And so everyone who hears the story is going to come to their conclusions and have their opinion, which is none of our business. None of us. This is between you and them. And that's another thing. Like, I haven't told many people. And the people I have told are people here that don't know him and weren't ever a part of the situation and really have nothing to say about it other than like, oh, okay, you did what you had to do. And what feels so isolating about it is the fact that the people I am closest to, like back home and like you, I guess, like I didn't even feel like I could come to you with that decision because I knew. You had to deal with our emotions. That exactly. I wasn't just hurting one person. I was hurting literally everyone I care about. But that's silly. it is, but that's what I'm saying. It's kind of silly that everyone got involved. Here's the thing. It, there is a mourning that has to happen for everyone. It's like when I knew daddy's been gone for the last seven years, and I will always run into that one person who just found out and their reaction. Now I'm consoling them on their feelings of being astounded that daddy's gone. And you're going to run into that too. It's the same, same thing. People have to process. But that's the thing. When when it's something that comes from me and my decision, like that's where the guilt stems from. Well, it shouldn't. There should be no guilt. You made a decision. It was not a quick one. And then everyone's like, oh my God, why the fuck would you do that? (laughs) And it's like, well, because I'm trying to look out for myself. And it's like, There are people who understand that and respect it that are very close to me. And there are some others that are not taking it so well. And that's frustrating. May I make this comparison? You Mm -hmm. choose to make a big choice on your body. Let's go there. You choose to have a plastic surgery done, let's say. Everyone's going to have opinion on it. Everyone's going to be thinking about it in their portion of their life and what they would or wouldn't do or what they do and don't believe. Should that affect your decision? Absolutely not. Doesn't mean that they, they're they not going to have a say or they're not going to sprout or spout off their opinion. And that's the same thing here. No guilt for decisions. I know, but like just even having this conversation and you sitting here and getting emotional about it, like I feel like I have to put a wall up. Okay. And that's the more you talk about it, the less you'll feel that way. Like, I feel like I can't sit here and process my emotions with someone who... That's not fair. That's like saying I can't have my emotions. You are allowed to have your emotions, but I'm also allowed to be uncomfortable. Sure. But the whole thing is uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable. Death is uncomfortable. You Mm -hmm. just have to let people process. Funny, funny. Life is funny. Not ha-ha funny, but... Life is a joke does this mean you can go on love island now i wouldn't want to go on the american version it sucketh it's really i mean i wouldn't want to also i'm not pretty enough to go on love island cut the crap it's true bruh i'm like fucking jack and the beanstalk shut it out here uh speaking of relationships i am having so much change happen so quickly that I'm, I'm just at like such a weird point. And I think that's why I'm not really emotional at the moment, just because I'm like, there's no time and there's no energy to be emotional. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Like, you don't have a lot of room. I'm like weirdly surrounded by people, but also like kind of lonely. But like, I love each of them. You know what I mean? But then I'm also... I've had this weird thing with like validation lately where I'm like, I feel like I'm chasing validation from friends who don't necessarily matter yet. Okay. 
that's a whole <laughs> okay thing. let's unpack that indeed that's a whole session in itself because whenever you seek external validation you're going to lose you can't control what other people think about you you're you got to then stop sit down and give yourself time to figure out what you want what you like about yourself, what you want to change about yourself. Be honest. Don't go overboard and say you want to change everything. If you hate everything, then you really need to talk to somebody because that certainly shouldn't be true. It's time to spend some time with you. Go inside. Literally date yourself. Literally just focus. Which is kind of why I did this. Yes. So that's very actually perfect timing if that is how you feel because loneliness is really just a good indicator that we can't be with ourselves in silence and then you have to ask why what are we avoiding the thing about it though is i feel like i like myself i feel like i'm at the point where like i really do like who i am as a person even if i do things like again like obviously i feel guilty for how i for for doing that to someone that I love and care about. However, I'm also proud of myself for doing what I had to do and not lying to anyone. People who love and care about you will understand and they will support you, period. You didn't go out of your way to hurt anybody. This was about you making good decisions. Yeah. This what Your intent was the right one. Your intention was pure. Mm -hmm. If I were you, MLA, I would sit down and start a page in a notebook that says what I like about myself. And on the mm -hmm. other side of it, things I want to work on and don't go overboard, make it easy breezy, make it real, make it three things. Do they have to be personality? Like what are we It can be about? anything. If you like, I like my hair. I like my eyes. I like my lip gloss. I like the way my nose is shaped, whatever that is. I like the way I laugh. It could be anything that supports you and your vision of yourself. I like the job I have. I like that I am smart. But this is, this is the thing. Like for me, I feel like I'm the opposite where I'm like, I like who I am inside okay you say that now put it in bullet points like i think that i'm the perfect amount of intelligent and dumb <laughs> okay so but then here you go so but you've just said something negative to counterbalance no, not but it's not negative like i'm not that annoying smart where it's like, oh my God, she is so annoying to even have a conversation with because she's so full of herself or... <sighs> See, now I'm struggling with words because it's like emotions, words, everything. But it's like, I can have an intellectual conversation, but I can also be so freaking silly and have one that makes absolutely zero sense, but it's still so fun to have. You right. know what I mean? Right. I feel like it's the perfect in-between of you're not like a Harvard graduate who's like fucking annoying but you're also not mind numbing to have a conversation with. Not that Harvard graduates are annoying. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like the people who are so intelligent, you don't even want to be around them. There's always going to be arrogant assholes. That has nothing to do with exactly. an intelligence level. That has to do with arrogant assholes trying to portray that they're intelligent and they can be absolute morons. But then there are people where you say a joke, like a really basic joke and like they don't even get it. But that could be because their mind wasn't there. They weren't thinking that way and they no, processed they, they differently. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't <laughs> pretend you don't. Yeah, well, it's okay. But loneliness can also equate to boredom too. Yeah. Not getting enough physical interaction as well. Some people are touch starved, if we're familiar with that phrase. Some people just need to. I just need a hug. Yes, yes. Can I say that? Do you know how important that is? I just need a hug. And this is controversial. This is going to be a controversial statement. My female friends give me hugs, right? And I appreciate them and they're great. But I just want to be engulfed, okay? I'm tired of being the one who's like this big ass bitch who's like engulfing the other person. Like I just want like this like big just like hug. Masculine hug. And to feel like protected. Yes. 
but men are afraid right now because we're just on the edge of the Epstein hole, you know. Well, also, I don't, I don't really know anyone that would fit that description. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're we're still a little off balance here in the world where we could just get a good friendly hug. One of the stories that I just read was about they were trying to do a study on heart failure and diets. Now, this mm-hmm. is from a book written back in the late 70s, early 80s. Okay. But it still remains true today. They had two rows of rabbits in a lab, and they were feeding them all a really fat-heavy diet, trying to induce heart failure. They found that the row of rabbits on the bottom row, for some reason, were not getting the same results, and they could not figure out why. Okay. Until at some point it was discovered that the evening person, I don't know if it was a scientist or someone who was just taking care of the lab, there was a person who was working in the evening who would take out the rabbits on the lower row, hold them, talk to them, and play with them. That skin contact, that talking, that gentleness, that care made those rabbits on the bottom row live longer. So when we think of how important it is to have hugs, hand-holding, touching, gentleness, it is imperative. And it's been proven time and again. And there's another whole story about babies in another country that were actually orphaned and they were left in cribs, basically just fed, changed, and put back in their cribs. No one spoke to them. No one touched them other than to change them and feed them. And the babies were dying right and left. They had no will to live. There was nothing completely physically wrong with them. They were just, they they had no will to live. Mm -hmm. And I find it fascinating that those kinds of stories are all over the place. You can die, (laughs) just give up wanting to live by not having contact that's meaningful. It's important to seek it. It's important to seek it out. Do you think that's why so many people in this generation are seeking unfulfilling, like, sexual relationships? I'm sure that's part of it. To fill that void? I'm sure that's part of it. We've put such an intense focus on it in media, in advertising, that that's a prominent part of our society. How can you not think it's, you can't tell your kids it's not important when everything they see in here has to do with sex. But I feel like if I were to partake in that, it would do more damage. Because there's a difference between sex and nurturing and and sex and caring. And like, I'd rather someone just like put their hand on top of my hand. There is like a there's intimacy and there is sex and that's two different things yeah and we always know when someone is right there with us we're the only animals not only but we're one of the few animals that um actually engage in sexual intercourse eye to eye because that really yes it's considered a threat to, to stare at an animal. If you lock baby, eyes with an animal. Eye to eye, baby. We be hitting everyone up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's a joke. There's a joke. Same thing with smiling. Showing your teeth is an act of aggression in most animals. But we laugh. Mom said missionary. <laughs> <laughs> Mom said missionary time. <laughs> missionary is only important if you're actually engaged. If you're in a relationship, yeah or connected to that person, you know what I'm saying? If you actually like them. Well, I would hope so. (laughs) Yeah, but a lot of people these days don't be doing that. It's kind of sad. I'm not judging you if you do, but I would really love to know. I think it would be very interesting, like, how many of those people are actually happy and content with those relationships. I've been asking people. And I'm convinced that they're not. They tell themselves they they're are. Lying. They're, I, I got feeling when I asked that question to people who are actively in that lifestyle, the answer does not convince me. And I'm listening for it. I'm listening for they're happy. And I do not believe they are. Mm-hmm. If you are, let us know. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I would love to have a conversation. I'm just, I'm so interested. Like, is is there any way for that to be fulfilling for someone? I'm or is sure everyone is. just lying to themselves, and we've created a generation of people who think that that is actually liberating, when in fact you are actually hurting yourself in the long run. I believe it's this. Just like you think of a nudist colony. There are people who enjoy walking around without clothes on. There is nothing wrong with that. They all agree. This is our bubble. This is our world. This is how we do things. Now, that can be the same in sexual relationships as well. I do believe that could be in theory. I just have not met one. I have not met a person who is honest with everyone in their life about the lifestyle they're leading. And therefore, the rest of it is garbage. You cannot tell me that you are happy if you have to lie to three other people about the lifestyle you are following. If everybody is at a party, if everybody is in an orgy situation, and that is what they've all agreed on, and they're all yeah. happy with that, kudos to you. Wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is your choice and your decision. There is nothing wrong with that. However, people who are just playing the air quotes field and just all over the place okay, are you really happy or why do you need to be all over the place? What are you searching for? But that's the thing. Like, I think there's also a difference. And again, I don't know, but I would assume there's a difference between someone who does it rarely, but to just satisfy that sexual need and someone who is a serial hookupper. Right, right. Because one... One is you like, you know, doing an animalistic instinct, I think, right. whatever. Right, it's like, like a release yeah. and the other one's a control factor. And the other one, you're trying to fill a hole <laughs> in more ways than one, baby. <laughs> you're trying to fill a hole for an issue that you're avoiding. It's fascinating. Sexual psychiatry and sexual psychology is fascinating. Mm -hmm. What makes us do what we do? Yeah. I swear, like, Fats family will get to a point where... You know, we we talk about this more in depth and everything. I just think like it's literally been a week. It's been a week and a day. Yeah, if you're trying to get the tea, give us some time to seep here. <laughs> like, give us some time. You know, I don't want to say anything that is disrespectful. I'm not sure. Yeah, or is disrespectful. I don't think I could be disrespectful to yeah, him. I don't like, he's such a beautiful human being. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's all good, babe. It's all I don't good. think I could say anything bad about him. And, Ever. and you shouldn't have to. Exactly. This was it, it didn't end. It was nothing to do with anyone other than myself. Right. This had nothing to do with him. Right. So. Things don't have to be bad to make a choice. Sometimes it's just timing sucks. Exactly. Yeah. And I am on a different coast. And again, that's another thing. Like, I, I'm a strong believer that long distance relationships can work. And I'm also a strong believer that if you want a relationship to work if both parties want a relationship to work it will but i got to a point where i just didn't want it to work anymore yeah so that's on me that was my decision and maybe one day it will but not right now because mla needs to be mla and focus on her work and chase that bag and do things for herself and not feel guilty and not have to have someone that she feels that she is responsible for you both come out stronger i believe that I already think it's it's doing things for him in a weird way. Mm -hmm. I think it made him reevaluate what he wants and push him to to reach those goals. I mean, maybe that's not true. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I hope that we both come out better for this. And even though I had to hurt him indirectly, I hope that we both realize that it was necessary right now. Right now, yep. Right now, Absolutely. Yep. Not, I mean, I'm not doing anything maliciously, I don't think. I don't think he is either. I think there's nothing but love there. If it's supposed to be, it will be. If it's not, it's not. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> when you meet someone when you're 16 years old, things get kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. Exactly. I think... Most of us have had that first love weird experience. And mine came back and then left me again, so. With a fucking kid. 
I don't want to do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that was on me. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that hit. If he comes back and there's a kid involved, it's going to be for reals. Mm, don't say that. You can't stay together just for a child. If it's bad, it's bad. Of course not. But I, I hope we wouldn't get to the point where there was an accidental child. Well, I didn't expect there to be an accidental child. Yeah, but like, <laughs> come on. You did not do what you were supposed to be doing. Yeah. If there's sex involved, it could happen. You just got to know that. I know. I took my lumps. I take my responsibilities. My humps. My humps. My humps. My humps. My lovely lady lumps. Take it out. Funny you bring up black eyed peas. Why? Because I believe this whole thing literally reminded me of that song by Fergie, Big Girls Don't Cry. Oh my God. See, I don't like that song. I don't either because it makes me uncomfortable. You know why? Because it's true. But I don't think it's like a good song. Like I don't enjoy this song. Of course you don't enjoy the song because it's her being her. She's She says the same thing. It's like, I have to grow. I have to do what I need to do. Yeah. Life gets better and life goes on and we grow and we change. No need to feel guilty. Do you? <laughs> My song oh, there you go. It's a little MLA original. So that got real heavy this week, guys. And... <laughs> Hopefully that's relatable. Yeah, I'm sure everybody can relate to this. We're getting ready to sneak up here on a Mercury retrograde, so everybody slow the fuck down. Think about things. Slow down. This next month apparently is supposed to be crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Slow down. Slow your roll. Think about what you're doing. Do it with intention. Whatever plans you have, follow up. Percocet. Molly Percocet. Chase a check. Never chase a bitch. Chase no bitch. On that note. <gasps> Police, open up. They've been right down at the Arby's. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to them and be like, I have a copyright question. Just open <laughs> your window and scream it out. They're down there for a shooting anyway. They're like, yeah. What's up? Don't do that. Take that part out. <laughs> All right, you guys. Stay cool. We love you. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.